Hey guys, welcome back to Expo Hub channel. Myself Rakesh, and we are going to encounter one of the tricky question on RE framework. So let's read the question, and I'm going to explain everything from where this question is coming from, and how could you answer it correctly. So let's get started and read the question. A developer wants to modify the robotic enterprise framework to make a linear process. So underline this keyword. He wants to modify the RE framework to make a linear process. Based on the RE framework documentation, which action should the developer perform? Okay, and they have given so many and all these options may not make sense to you at all if you do not understand the question and from where this question is coming from okay now to give you the conceptual knowledge of this question from where it is coming let me take you to the re framework okay so let me open uh, one of the re framework so what you do in case you have not opened it it is much necessary that you click on this template robotic enterprise framework give it a name and open that okay so the the moment you open what would you see you would find this robotic enterprise framework so clearly the question they are talking about linear process right uh, so here if you look at the answer the answer is pointing towards the get transaction data okay so i'm going to let you know where this question is coming from so this is the four step that we have initialize get transaction data process transaction and end process right so let's go inside get transaction data just click on it okay let me maximize this window so that we can see it quite clearly okay so now here look at it okay so the get transaction data here on the uh, l section you have this workflow called get transaction data dot xml they are calling this workflow now in the workflow let's first of all when you see such a kind of a workflow the very first thing you should do is always check the arguments what are the arguments being used okay now i want you to make note of two different arguments the first is transaction number there is in argument transaction number which is getting its value from a variable called transaction number make a note of this okay this one getting value from something called transaction number now what is this transaction number let me show you in the in the main workflow if you go back to the main workflow and hit on the variables okay now you will find there is something called transaction number integer variable it is simply a counter the transaction number variable is nothing but a counter okay number transaction number first second third so the transaction number or the counter initially set to 1 okay make a note of this this is very important okay this one we have understood let's go back get transaction data and i am going to the import arguments all right so now i got to understand the transaction number right the transaction number is a variable is a counter integer variable which is having its value 1 okay and it is passing that 1 to in underscore transaction number so this should be very very clear first point okay now the second variable that i am going to explain is the transaction item do you see there is something called out underscore transaction item so you are able to differentiate transaction number is nothing but a counter transaction item is the q item or, or the transaction item that you are passing to process item this is item okay out underscore transaction item is a out kind of a argument which would which is going to pass the value from that workflow to a variable called transaction item okay these are the two points you should remember you should not get confused with the transaction number and transaction item 
keep the last two words right item this calls item and this is number number means is a counter and item means the actual item or the transaction which you want to process okay so this should be very very clear okay fine so once you have clarity on that let's open the workflow getting it so what you have learned transaction number which is a counter variable and the transaction item which you are going to get it so if you look at this get transaction data this question is coming from this explanation so let's read this explanation very very clearly get transaction data get transaction item what is the job of this particular workflow it gets a transaction item from a specified source example orchestrator or queues or spreadsheet from excel file or from a database or from a mailbox or a web api okay this is very very important so this much we have understood the work of this get transaction data workflow now read the second line if there are no transaction items remaining let's say there are 100 items you have processed all the 100 items if there are no transaction items remaining out underscore transaction item is set to nothing so what would happen the out transaction item is set automatically to nothing so what is this out transaction item so here in this workflow if you see if you scroll down this is a activity called get transaction item so this is a core activity called get transaction item okay or get queue item so this get transaction item or the get queue item activity if you look at the property of this activity you see it is going to get that transaction and is going to pass that transaction item into a variable called out underscore transaction getting it it is passing the output the output of this activity is getting passed to the variable called out underscore transaction item simple okay so now you read it if there are no transaction item remaining out transaction item is set to nothing that means this particular activity cannot fetch any data so this will become nothing so by default this out transaction item if you look at the argument okay this is left blank so if this activity cannot fetch anything if this activity cannot fetch anything what would happen the out transaction item value would become nothing right that means there is nothing it, it is able to fetch okay is set to nothing which leads to end of process state if this becomes nothing then it will go to the end process state so how do you know it is going to end process state let's go back to the main workflow and here if you see okay if you see i am going to the get transaction data and if the transaction there is no transaction item to process then if you see in the main workflow if there is no data it will go to end process state so if you click on this double click on this it is written uh, transaction item is nothing then it should go to end process okay this this understanding we must be having it now let's go back and understand our question in the get transaction okay just to avoid confusion i'll start from the very beginning i am in the main workflow i am going inside the get transaction data okay so now in the get transaction data i am opening this xml file open workflow now see from where this question is coming now let's read the third sentence or the third paragraph four cases in which there is only a single transaction that means if there are 100 transactions you are you know going through the ari framework let's say there is only one transaction every time i have to only process one transaction and i'm using a ari framework so in such a case we can still use the ari framework how to use it let me tell you for cases in which there is a single transaction which is a linear process that is a linear process so look at your question a developer wants to modify the robotic enterprise framework to make a linear process so are you able to get it from where this question is coming from this description the question is coming okay so the linear process means where there is only a single transaction use an if activity 
So let me increase it slight a bit so that you can see it quite easily. You can read that. Okay. Now look at this. Use an if activity to check whether the argument in transaction number has the value 1. So by default, this transaction number I showed, you know, in, in the initially I have explained you the transaction number by default value is given 1. Okay. By default, it is given 1, meaning it is the first and only transaction and assign the transaction item to out a transaction item. So this sentence, to understand this sentence, I am going to give you an example. Okay, let's say there is only one transaction item which I have to process. Now for that, what I am going to do, I am going to use a if activity. Okay, I am going to drag and drop the if activity above this. Okay, now here for the if activity, I am going to say in underscore. So what is the value of this transaction number? 1. Initially for the very first time when it is running, the value is 1. So I am saying if the transaction number equals to 1, only that time you do the get transaction item. Only that time you try to pass the output of this get transaction item to the out transaction item. To this argument you pass the value to this argument. This transaction item you need to pass it to this particular argument. So if the transaction number is 2, then don't don't come to this block because this is going to on this is only going to execute only when the transaction number is equal to 1 if it is not equals to 1 that means there are multiple transactions then it won't come to here so it it won't be coming here so that means if there is only one transaction that i have to process i am simply saying in transaction number equals to 1 so next time through the re framework when it comes back to this particular stage where it is trying to uh, execute the get transaction data xml file the moment it comes what would happen the transaction number will become 2 so when the transaction number becomes 2 right then it won't come here if it won't come here what would happen the value of out transaction item will become nothing the moment it becomes nothing if you look at the workflow right if the transaction item becomes nothing, what would happen if the transaction item value becomes nothing? So this transaction item is nothing but from the out tra underscore transaction item, this transaction item variable is getting the value. Okay. So transaction item is, if you look at the no data, transaction item is nothing, then it's going to end the process. So now you have a question, Rakesh, how this transaction item is increasing you said next time when it comes the transaction item number will become 2 but where exactly that happens right that question i have in my mind so let me show you where exactly that happens so let's go to main block click on the main go to the process transaction okay now in the process transaction if you look at here you have the invoke process workflow so it is processing your transaction item whatever you have got it whatever the input data you have got it is processing here so once the process is complete below this there is something called invoke set transaction status so you should go to this particular workflow okay so the moment you get inside this workflow you will see there is a condition they have given okay in business exception is nothing or system exception is nothing that is the time you know you set the status to success if there is a business exception if it is true then it will set the status as business exception if there is the system exception that will go to system exception now in these two cases if it is success what is happening if you see there is a small assign activity being used inside this where it's incrementing the transaction number so let's open this if you see Again, these are the arguments, okay? At the end, what is happening? It is incrementing the transaction number. So let's see this. So you see transaction number plus one. So what is this IO underscore transaction number? Every time click on the argument and you would be able to find it. So do you see IO underscore transaction number? It's nothing but an integer variable. It's a counter variable. It's just passing the values, okay? So it is going to pass the value to transaction number variable later. 
so here it is incrementing the value getting it so it's just incrementing the value and it, it is trying to reuse okay so here the increment value is happening so once the increment value happens in the process state let, let's go back so what is happening it got the transaction item the first transaction item it processed it and then on success it's going to success or business rule exception is going to increment the transaction number and then it goes here so the moment it goes here into the get transaction data what would happen the transaction number has already increased the transaction number has already increased and what changes i have done i said only fetch the transaction item only if the transaction number equals to one so here i have put a logic because of the logic it's not going to pull any data and finally because it is not going to execute the out transaction value will become nothing and as per our transition it will go to end process state okay so here let's go back to the question if you look at this question and if you read the last option on my screen in the get transaction data workflow only assign a value okay only assign a value to out transaction item so only you are assigning a value to out transaction so assigning a value we are not exactly using assign activity rather this get transaction items you see the transaction item is assigning value to out transaction that is the meaning so here only assign a value to out underscore transaction item if if in underscore transaction number equals to one so if you see i have applied the same logic if in underscore transaction number equals to one okay so if you have heard me clearly if you are if you heard my explanation clearly and you are going step by step like i did then you will have a complete understanding if you read through the description and if you go through my explanation with all this you should be pretty clear why this answer is the right answer okay guys so thank you so much i hope in case you are uh, you got confused with lot of um, you know transaction number transaction item all these terms do not worry go very slowly because understanding this question is very very important because many people will give a wrong answer so this understanding has to be pretty clear so thank you guys we are going to meet in our next content take care bye bye